friends I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marty Barrett, and I am superintendent of schools. And I'd like to welcome all of Tim's family, who I see out front. And I'd like to acknowledge that the last time we were all together uh, for Tim's funeral, we were so overcome by grief that now that some time, not much, but some time has passed, it is not quite as raw, and today feels much more of a celebration than it did before. We all missed him, and we miss him in different ways. To his students here, I know it was Mr. Merritt, and I've been asked to speak about Tim from a perspective of high school teacher and as a school principal. Tim was hired in 1999 to teach high school English here at Frontier. He remained in that position until 2009 when he was hired as principal at the Sunderland Elementary School. I first met Tim when I became principal here in 2002. I quickly learned how adored he was by his students. He had a way of connecting with them that allowed them to take risks where they're learning and to explore ideas, ideas freely and without judgment. Tim had a grand capacity for listening. And I say this with great sincerity, as it often seems like a lost art to be able to be fully present when someone is speaking and to listen deeply without interruption or judgment. It was quite clear that while he adored his teaching, he was pondering another role within the school system. He positioned himself for an administrative position by completing graduate work so that when a position was open, he would be ready. There were times when we were still here that we needed a substitute assistant principal and Tim was the guy we turned to. I had opportunities to observe him with students, parents, and staff, and it was clear that he had the temperament and the desire to become a principal. That opportunity came when the Sunderland Elementary position became open. In many ways, Tim was a late bloomer. Prior to finding his way in education, he had a successful career in business. He married later in life and became a father at 48. 
In many ways, it is ironic that his life was cut so short. Some may take the approach that he was lucky to have found his true calling. Tim was a good man. He wasn't perfect, but no one is. He had a good heart, and he was kind, and he was funny, and he was irreverent. And this is exactly the type of event that he would so have adored being part of. He could be body and bodacious and gentle and complex. He loved his family, and we often shared stories of growing up from the antics with his sisters and his brother to his loving and firm guidance from his mom and dad. He and his wife, Nancy, produced two beautiful sons of whom he was so proud. At almost every meeting, he would proudly display the latest pictures of his boys and what they were up to. At Tim's funeral, I read the, gave the eulogy and read a letter from one of the students that I had received emails from after Tim died. And I'd like to take a moment and just read one such letter. Tim was a teacher that made real connections with people, and he left a long and lasting impression on me. His never-fading smile, his warm personality, and his ability to speak honestly with a sense of hope at an otherwise difficult time for me personally. As someone who carried a disdain for most things having to do with school, Tim was able to show me that there was hope for me and that life was a wonderful gift not to be wasted on lamenting about things that you couldn't control. Tim made a great difference to many students' lives, and the spot that he has left vacant is one that cannot be filled. It is at this darkest time that I am able to appreciate the blessing that I was one of his students and was able to see how brightly his flame burned before it went out. Every person he touched will remember him differently. I myself will always remember someone who took the extra time to ask me what I was thinking and had a genuine interest in my response. Sometimes the most trivial interactions have the deepest impact. So, my message to all of you is to emulate the kindness that Tim extended to others. Take the time to listen intently to what others say, as you may not know of its full impact. Show gratitude and celebrate the small things in life that have meaning to you. For truly, to have a person's life have meaning, it is to replicate those ideals that they have left us, have left us with. With that, I would like to invite Katie Tolls to please come forward. When I, one of the things I thought about in thinking about Tim was a wonderful gift that he gave to us here at Frontier, which was to come up with the idea of having a cabaret here. And um, so Tim initiated this. And he, um, it wasn't just an event, it was a whole process. The, all the acts that um, were going to be part of the cabaret um, had the opportunity to work with Tim. And he worked with them uh, many hours to be sure that everyone was a success at the cabaret. And everybody was. And, um, under Tim's guidance. And I think that I may have sung this particular song at an early cabaret. There are bridges, there are bridges, they are shining in the sun. They are stone and steel and wood and wire, and they can change two things to one. They are languages and letters, they are poetry and all. They are love and understanding, and they are better than a wall. They are languages and letters, they are poetry and all. They are love and understanding, and they are better
There are canyons, there are canyons, and they are yawning in the night. They are rank and bitter anger, and they are all devoid of light. They are fear and blind suspicion, they are apathy and pride. They are dark and so foreboding, and they are oh so very wide. They are fear and blind suspicion, they are apathy and pride. They are dark and so foreboding, and they are oh so So let us build a bridge of music, let us cross it with a song, let us span another canyon, and let us right another wrong. Oh, and if someone should ask us where we're off and bound today, we will tell them building bridges and be off and on our way. Oh, and if someone should ask us where we're off and today we will tell them building bridges and be off and on our way
before I start, I would just like to thank Marty, because that was a Tim I knew also. And your words reflected to me what Tim was all about also. Tim also uh, was very important to a lot of people that he may have never knew. Um, they were our veterans that served in Sunderland, from Sunderland, from Franklin County, and from the region. But it was very important what he was trying to do with our young ladies and gentlemen that are in Sunderland Elementary School. And shortly after Tim passed away, we had a request from one of the members of our community to talk to the Veterans Administration and tell them what Tim had done and if there's anything they would do. And in fact, what Tim has is the first time uh, the Veterans Administration has ever honored someone that wasn't a veteran. And what they did from the Department of Veteran Services of Central Franklin County District, they have a citation for Tim that I'd like to read now. On behalf of the Central Franklin County Veterans Service District, the Board of Directors has taken a vote this day to honor Tim Merritt as our district's Citizen of the Year. This district is recognizing his personal efforts in support of our district service men and women, and above all, the veterans from the town of Sunderland, Massachusetts. Today is an opportunity, however small, to say thank you to the brave fathers, mothers, sisters, sons, brothers, and daughters who have sacrificed themselves in many ways and in many stations across the globe so we may dine each evening in peace. With these words, recently deceased and much beloved, Principal Tim Merritt opened the first Sunderland Elementary School Veterans Day observation ceremony in November of 2009. That first program, the brainchild of Mr. Merritt, proved so popular that it has, been, has since been repeated as an annual event. Mr. Merritt's purpose in organizing that first ceremony remains as valid today as it was then. To help Sunderland Elementary School students understand and appreciate the true meaning of Veterans Day. For the first two ceremonies, this son of an Air Force pilot gave greater meaning to students of Veterans Day by telling personal stories about his father's military career and the pride he had felt because of his father's service. Mr. Merritt also had teachers and parents read email messages written by Sunderland servicemen and women to the students. These messages described why each had chosen to serve our country as well as their own pride in military service. Mr. Merritt knew this would provide material that could be shared with elementary school age children and something they could relate to and understand. Each year, the ceremony has included a flag lowering to half staff while taps are played, a flag folding demonstration, and the singing of patriotic songs by the elementary school choir. In addition, at all ceremonies to date, all U.S. military service departments have been represented by active duty or reserve servicemen and women in uniform. In 2011, the ceremony included a flyby, and in 2012, a flyover by military aircraft. Finally, following the formal ceremony each year, Military personnel have accompanied students back to school for classroom questions and answers and to have lunch with the children before returning to their important military duties. This annual ceremony was a source of great pride for Mr. Merritt. He would be proud to know that it is his honor that this important program will continue to thrive and be celebrated according to this original format each year in November. This was signed by Dave Gendron, the chairman, Leo Parent, the director, and Mark Fitzpatrick, the vice, and this plaque will be on display in Sunderland Elementary in honor of Tim and his work.
everybody. I just wanted to take a minute and thank Ed Hines for putting this together for all of us today. My name is Amy smith Zioli, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Sunderland Elementary School Committee, and I'm happy to speak on behalf of the entire committee. Justine Rosewarn, Doug Fulton, Tracy Zachary, and Carlos Nieto. We all missed him very much. I suppose because this is a statement from the school committee, it should lend itself to have a more professional tone, maybe list how incredibly efficient we are, and how well we work together with Tim to develop practical policy and set mindful, fiscally responsible budgets and advocated for most, the most sound educational programming in our school. Well, while we did do all of those things and we continue to do them, we were happy to work with Tim as a team. But that's not really what we want to say. It's not really what we want to talk about today. That's not what's in our hearts when we think of Tim. When we think of Tim, we think of his friendship and his genuine leadership, his humor and his lightheartedness. Yes, we worked with Tim as our principal, but above all else, I think we all just considered him our good, dear friend. Tim stepped into our school community when we were all hurting. As a committee and as a community, frankly, we were at our lowest. On the heels of major budget cuts, we needed some hope and we needed some light. And then Tim walked in. He was just what we needed. We needed a partner and we needed a leader, but again, mostly, we needed a friend. He was a friend to our committee and he was a friend to the school and he, we, that's exactly what we got from Tim. We found our light in him. We appreciated the fact that Tim was always so approachable. We could have honest, open conversations with him without formality or advance notice. It made it easy for us to give Tim our feedback, sometimes our criticism, our thoughts, and occasional, occasionally, ever so lovingly, a piece of our mind. This culture of ease and comfort that he created made it sometimes feel like we were, more, we were helping to run a big family of 176 plus kids and 25 plus aunts and uncles, even complete with a crazy uncle or two. I won't mention any names. As a committee, we watched Tim approach his position with all the care and love and consideration you would with your loved ones. Tim knew and cared for every child in our building, and I think every child knew it. He embraced our children and our community. He opened the doors of our school and welcomed in the public with pride, creating partnerships with our neighbors, seizing every opportunity to make meaningful connections with people. As busy as he was, he always made time for a cup of coffee and a chat. When we think of Tim and the memories he had left with us, I'm reminded by a quote from Maya Angelou. People forget, will forget what you did, people will forget what you said, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. That is exactly what we remember with Tim. The we he made us all feel. Like what we said and what we did was truly important. He made us feel like we all mattered. Like our little part, in the community of Sunderland Elementary School wasn't very little at all. Sure, we had our disagreements, we had a few disputes, but at the end of the day, he made us feel like we were all just good friends. For that, we thank you, Tim. I wish we all could have had time for one more cup of coffee and a chat. You left us far, far too early. Thank you. I met Tim about uh, eight years ago, right here at this uh, very piano. I was playing piano for my son for the cabaret when he was a freshman here at Frontier. And uh, I met Tim, and 
Um, at the time, we were using the house PA system here, and my son kind of volunteered, hey, my dad plays in a band, he's got a really cool PA system. And I've been running sound at the cabaret for the last uh, nine years now. So, um, But uh, um, he was a great guy. He struck me um, because he really cared about the kids, and that's, um, that was really important to me to be involved in this, and um, especially what he did for the cabaret and what he did for all the kids that were involved in the cabaret here at Frontier. Um, so um, I'm really uh, honored to be singing today for him. Pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. Summer's gone and all the roses fallen. It's you, it's you must go and I must hide. But come me back when summer's in the meadow and when the van and white with snow Yes, I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy I love you so But when you come and all the flowers die in I am dead as dead I well may be You come and find the place where I am lying And kneel and say an ave there for me And I shall hear the soft you tread above me And on my grave Warmer, sweeter be For you will bend And tell me that you love me And I shall sleep in peace Until you come to me And I shall sleep in peace Until you come to me You know, we were both good friends of Tim's and uh, co-workers and musical buddies. So um, I asked Pete, you know, if he wanted to do something with me. I said yes. <laughs> he said yes. I was psyched. And he's like, actually, I have the perfect song in mind. So this is another Springsteen song off of his magic album called uh, Terry's Song. Well, they built the Titanic to be one of a kind. Many ships have ruled the seas. They built the Eiffel Tower to stand alone, but they could build another if you please. The Taj Mahal, the pyramids of Egypt, they're unique, I suppose. But when they built you, brother, they broke the mold When they built you, brother They turned us into gold and When they built you, brother They broke the mold Now the world is filled with men you wander under Passing sun and sometimes something comes along And you know it's for sure the only one The Mona Lisa, the David, Jesus and Mary Sistine, Jebel and Joan And when we bid you, brother They say you can't take it with you. Well, I 
nothing that they're around Cause all I know is I woke up this morning And something big was gone Gone into that dark ether Where you're still young and hard and cold Just like the maid that you were in It broke the moment When they built you, brother They turned us into gold When they built you, brother It broke the moon Now your death is upon us And we'll return your ashes to the earth But I know that you take comfort in knowing You've been roundly blessed and cursed But love is a power that's greater than death It's like the songs and the stories told And when she put you around She broke the mold Good afternoon. My name is Ben Barshevsky, and for the past eight weeks, I have acted as interim principal of Sunderland Elementary School. It is with great pleasure that I speak on behalf of the Sunderland faculty, staff, and students. But what a great job all of the performers have done this afternoon, and especially the students. We appreciate everyone coming here this afternoon to share so many wonderful memories about Tim. I've talked to past students as well as his staff and not a single memory was shared without a big smile on their faces. Even in passing, Tim's personality is as endearing and irresistible as ever. He was an educator's politician with his coffee in hand his shiny shoes, sport jacket, wise guy smile, and his little legs dancing around the Sunderland Halls. <laughs> Behind the smile was a man who was so charismatic and full of life. His uncanny sense of humor could fill a room with laughter within seconds, and he could lighten the mood just like that. He was an extremely zealous individual who approached all aspects of his life with love, enthusiasm, and hard work. His fine qualities were very admirable, and he displayed an energy and passion towards education that was infectious for his students and staff. Tim was an absolute master of the written and spoken word. At the beginning of the school year, the principals of our school district recognize educators who have given 20 years of service Tim would speak on behalf of these teachers, and it was during these masterfully composed speeches that some of his true talents were displayed. He would include words in, the dic uh, words in his speeches that many of us are still trying to find in the dictionary to this day. He not only made us feel like diamonds in the rough, but Tim's mastery of words and academic excellence began to rub off on his fellow educators and students. When it came to education, Principal Merritt was able to think outside of the box. He was a leading and driving force behind the idea of keeping it local as he worked with the Sunderland PTO in the Farm to Table initiative. Principal Merritt realized the importance of technology 
and he was a global thinker. He helped bring smart boards to the Sunderland classrooms, and he was the leader in bringing the IVECA program to Sunderland Elementary School last year. At this time next month, our sixth grade students will experience a live broadcast with students from South Korea, and that is all because of Tim. One of Mr. Merritt's most admirable qualities was his ability to show a genuine interest in everyone he met. When you spoke with Tim, you knew he was giving you his full and undivided attention. He had the ability to create and maintain a personal connection with everyone he met in the school community. He was very supportive of the Sunderland staff as he knew what a difference they made in the children's lives. He was always there to advocate for students in need, and it was never done because he wanted recognition. Whenever a decision was made by Principal Merritt, he always had the kids' best interest in mind. Shortly after Mr. Merritt passed away, teachers at Sunderland provided their students with the opportunity to write fond memories they had of Mr. Merritt for his two sons, Kai and Taro. The following is a memory I would like to share. Dear Kai and Taro, a small moment I had with your dad was one morning when I arrived at school. I saw your dad in the hallway. He was standing there with his fancy suit and tie on and his coffee mug in his hands. He looked at me and said, James, you are one handsome devil today. I said back to him, you are one handsome devil yourself. <laughs> then it was like we were the only ones in the school. The hallway was quiet, not a student in sight. We brought our arms over our heads and in slow motion, like in the movies, he gave me a high five. It made me really happy. Every once in a while, throughout everyone's journey in life, we come across an individual who not only, not only impacts our lives, but actually changes them for the better. Tim was this kind of individual for his students. Tim's students have characterized him with the words honor, respectful, funny, and sweet. Principal Merritt would encourage his students to think outside the box and instilled in them a love for storytelling. Tim was able to engage his students and reach them in ways that would shape the rest of their lives. The following is a quote from our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln said, in the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. And wow, Tim, you certainly did have a lot of life in you. Although you have left us far too soon, you will certainly never be forgotten. A little piece of you lives on in every student that you have taught and colleague that you have worked with. Your name will be remembered as children perform in Cafe Sun, Arts Night, or as your older students write their admission essays, remembering, remembering all of the tricks you taught them and striving to be half as fluid and effective as your words would have been. We are thankful for your laughter, advice, and love. You are sorely missed and loved by all of us. There are only two people in my life who call me Eddie. <laughs> my mother <laughs> and Tim. I will never forget driving to school on Tuesday and Wednesday morning, and my cell phone service doesn't work where I live up in the hills. So when I get down to 63, the, the service kicks in. And it would always sound like Tuesday morning, you bring Hey! Hey, 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 let me get into this. It was so nice And it was great. I loved it. <coughs> and in return, I had my pet name for him. Bubba. <laughs> so we get together and we have these meetings because that's what music teachers do with the administration, with band stuff. And we'd be sitting in that uh, meeting room of the office, and these meetings happen a lot. And there, uh, there are not many, there are not many men on staff. So, kind of, kind of 
you know, like talking to your male buddies. But we were accused on more than more than one occasion of having what do you call it, Sheila? A romance? <laughs> have this band here today because of Tim. It was his idea to have Jason and Lee and Johnny, where are John? Oh, and Johnny and, and actually you don't mind sitting in and Jason also, so we go right into the second piece. So we'll be able to play. Not gonna, you know, you don't have to play the city, so Johnny, <laughs> I, I like I like our shows to be informal. We're all family. So Tim's recent span is this together. You know, what, um, what Ben said about Tim's gift for writing is that one of the things that really sticks with me. I always looked forward to what he would come up with next in his writing. It truly was a gift to write. And I'm just that about it. But for me, the big picture is this, that we lost a really, really dear friend. But, you know, life goes on, it really does. And so, we were talking about this in rehearsal the other day, that we lost a friend, but we're about to gain another friend, right? We weren't sure if Jason was going to make it today, because he's expecting a child in the moment. <laughs>
wanna break it. I wanna help to keep you clean. Tom Petty. And we love Tim, and we miss Tim.